Welcome back. We have got some fun in the world of remasters, and it's got to start with a question. So take a look at this wonderful graphic. I would love to know what kind of gamer are you? Are you a prehistoric gamer, an ancient gamer, maybe a medieval gamer, an old gamer who maybe played something like The Last of Us uh, Part 1? Or are you maybe a new gamer who's about to play The Last of Us Part 2? remastered because yes that uh, is actually happening people have opinions and they're at least doing one or two interesting things with it but as always there are some fun caveats that's not all though valve are doing interesting things just like my good friends over on today's sponsor it's time to think sharp something that feels damn good and if you want to learn those high paying superpower stem fields like data science computer science and maths you can learn by doing today at brilliant.org forward slash bellular news where the first 200 get 20 percent off an annual plan and where they've got a 30-day free trial which you should definitely check out of course the world today is all about data help so are our games even and the ability to think through that data in your head is really powerful. So getting started with the basics of data science, where you'll learn all those key concepts is really awesome. Then you can progress into the more advanced topics, like say applied probability. And what I love is how they keep it fun and fresh with bite-sized quizzes. There are interactive examples, fun analogies. It is a approach to learning that is actually all about doing active problem solving, really engaging with the material. And they are so good at explaining concepts. Concepts. I mean, come on, the modern world loves to bamboozle us with numbers. How often do you see numbers everywhere, right? Uh, you know, throwing deals at us left, right, and center. Uh, even if you're not gunning for a new job, I think that these are mental tools that are absolutely useful everywhere. And the best place to learn STEM and to arm yourself with these awesome mental tools is brilliant, where you can learn by doing at your own pace across the web and at their app. You can get started now. The first 200 to click my link brilliant.org forward slash belly news get 20 percent off an annual plan and a 30-day free trial which you got to check out i mean hey if you get to the i mean man okay so we got there's a really good one like crazy robots later on you've got the monty hall problem which is honestly a kind of mind-blowing one about probability seriously it's all pretty sick check it out link below all right, thanks for popping in the sponsor rate. It actually does help us out. Okay, The Last of Us. It is getting yet another remaster. And it really is something, of course, we had The Last of Us. It was a very prehistoric game. It came out in the PlayStation 3. Now, The Last of Us then got remastered onto the PS4. Then, of course, we have The Last of Us Part 2, which came out on the PS4 as well. We've since got The Last of Us Part 1, which was their remaster, rebuild of The Last of Us. That uh, basically meant they got to sell The Last of us again you know brackets the last of us not remastered because now the last of us part one and the last of us uh you know remastered are, are different games but anyway hey they got to upgrade that with ps5 enhancements and sell it for a bunch of money and also ship a version onto steam that was profoundly not ready for its launch date and now we have this new breaking news that the last of us part two will finally arrive in the ps5 which of course does sound a little bit funny when um, you know you've very obviously already been able to play it on the ps5 um but of course that's the playstation 4 version running on the backwards compatibility mode so it's been less than a year since the pr disaster that was naughty dog release of uh, The Last of Us Part 1 over on PC that followed up its uh, PS5 launch, which honestly was way better. Now, broadly with Part 1, what people said is, um, well, basically, it was a largely inconsequential repackaging of the original, especially because the multiplayer mode, which people loved in The Last of Us 1, uh, well, that that was, that was cut. And uh, the already, you know, very competent The Last of Us Remastered which was a PS4 game that, of course, could run on the PS5, well, that was a very competent video game, wasn't it? Like, it's a pretty good package. And there is something interesting here, because we know Naughty Dog have been trying to make The Last of Us Part 2 multiplayer. They, you know, kicked that back from the launch. The whole goal was for that to be basically a live service launch, but it ended up not really going anywhere, and they ended up with this kind of problem, I suppose, where you've got half the office who maybe need to work in something. So who knows? Maybe they were working in another game. Maybe they were redeployed to do a release such as this one. Anyway, this time, though, they have learned their lesson when it comes to public positioning. Because what we get here is, yes, the expected updates, but also some new things that you could not otherwise get. Uh, there are quality of life and performance improvements from the Last of Us Part 1 remake for PS5 that are carried forward onto this. But there's also new gameplay in the form of a speedrun mode, a Lost Levels style thing uh, being added, uh, a roguelite mode as well that is called No Return. 
Now that to me actually does look like a piece of, uh, you know, video game that's different and new and that I can play. And also, this time, they're doing an upgrade path. Now, there could be a few wrinkles with that, but yes. Uh, the Last of Us, no return then. It is a roguelite survival mode designed to let players prove their mettle in randomized encounters. Mechanically then, this is the biggest change is them actually evolving uh, what's going on. They're reusing environments uh, and things like that. They're reusing, um, you know, bosses and stuff, which does make sense, but in a remixed roguelite mode. What I'll be interested to see then is just how far they're willing to push that. Are they still going to make it like as narratively, you know, cohesive? and grim as they can or are they going to be a little bit more okay to just lean into this being a video game maybe focusing on the fun that'll be the big question for me now things have been a little bit confusing because there is more than a little confusion over uh basically why none of this can happen in the ps4 because why can't it happen in the ps4 i mean surely you do not need all of this technical wizardry afforded to you by the ps5 to you know do, do a new gameplay mode of the same video game right and i suppose that's the thing this isn't really a, hey if you have ps5 even better by the way here's a dlc with new content have fun and maybe they rebundle it into you know a greatest uh, or you know game of the year edition which is the thing the industry you know previously would have wanted to do then this rather um interesting interesting post appeared uh, ps4 versus ps5 graphics difference for the last of us part two here from pio uh, now can you tell which one is which i would hazard to guess that most people couldn't and there's a few reasons for that uh, number one no the difference isn't massive number two this is on, uh, you know, this is on uh, X. I suppose I should probably just yield and call it X at some stage. Uh, it's on that, so, you know, you will be dealing with some compression. Overall, I would say that maybe this is not the best showcase picture of that. Um, it could be that when you're looking at, say, uh, LOD, some things like that, that you'll actually see more of a difference. Maybe for some of these close-ups, like, yes, if you pixel peep, there are differences. But I think, broadly speaking, this will be coming down to pixel peeping. And also, perhaps to a performance mode for the game. Now, those performance modes could make a difference. I'll just read this uh, summary of what they were in part one from Eurogamer. The Last of Us Part One offers five uh, genuine visual modes engaged through various selections and system tweaks. With the PS5 set to 60 hertz mode, you get the option of fidelity mode that offers 4K visuals with a 30 FPS frame rate target alongside a performance mode that advertises dynamic 4K visuals or native 1440p visuals, depending on output resolution, but actually delivers 1440p regardless. Um, then, if you have 120 hertz engaged, you get the same options, but the fidelity mode now promises a 40 FPS target, and as an additional modifier, engaging both 120 hertz and VRR will give you the option to unlock 120 hertz options, maximizing frame rate, and of course using variable refresh rate to smooth out any frame differences. So, fairly interesting at selection, but for a lot of people, running this game at 60 FPS basically means it can be enjoyable. I would certainly be one of those people. I slogged through a whole bunch of that game and while yes naughty dog pretty much did offer the best 30 fps on town on the ps4 pro it was by no means an experience that i loved playing because yeah i'm a pc gamer at heart i do like my frame rates now when you compare with the original remaster there is a main difference and that is pricing because the ps5 direct purchase price is currently unknown but we do assume it to be 70 dollars which means that yeah this is basically being used to say hey didn't pick the game up now you can get the best version possible additional content give me 70 bucks instead of doing the you know re-release and slightly cheaper price point but the thing that matters is there's an upgrade path right uh so it's 10 bucks for someone to go from the ps4 version to the ps5 version and with this there's actually one group of people who are screwed so if you bought this game on the playstation store 10 buck upgrade simple if you bought the disc, then basically you need to insert your Last of Us disc in order to buy or play the PS5 version. And if you do happen to be somebody who owns the disc from your PS4 but decided to go digital, you know, with the digital PS5, um, yeah, tough luck. There is no upgrade path for you. So, uh, yes, yeah, certainly a percentage of people are basically uh, kind of being screwed there. And the really hilarious thing is that if somebody was to rebuy, well, at that stage, you spent so much additional money because you got the digital console that you may as well have just got the one with the disc drive, which, yeah, sucks, frankly. Now, to continue on then, one thing to think about here is that these remasters kind of will serve a bit of a role for Naughty Dog. Basically, 
It allows for polishing and updating games, and that in a way is a sort of easy entry path for newer staff to the company. As an example, I always thought that if we came into a whole bunch of money, a decently cool project would be to basically kind of remake The Pale Beyond based on all the things that we all have learned by then, and to essentially use that as, um, as a project to actually get newer staff kind of trained up on the tech, but also trained up on the sorts of things that like we make as a studio and actually quite actively experience some of our past work. Um, so I can actually see that being a benefit, but obviously to a customer, I mean, you're not going to care about that because, um, well, that's not really a benefit to you right now. As for no return, the roguelite mode, I really do have to wonder if that's making use of some tech that they perhaps developed for the multiplayer game, because at the very least, The Last of Us Factions 2, which is the standalone multiplayer experience, according to Kotaku sources, it has been put on ice. That, of course, is following this big review of the live service portfolio from Bungie that uh, has obviously led to, I believe, half of that live service portfolio being way kicked, uh, you know, down the road. Of course, though, you might be thinking, um, what about Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut? Because that was all pretty good, you know, especially when we've got the inclusion of some missing scenes and, you know, uh, director's uh, commentary and that sort of thing. Why is this not just a straight upgrade to the original patching in the new content for all users? And it just so happens that if you have a PS5, well, hey, now it really does make sense to buy The Last of Us 2 finally. Um, no, as it stands, they know there are audiences who will turn up for the remaster and give them 10 bucks. And they know there are loads of people that they can market this game to. And uh, ultimately, they'll get 70 bucks from way more people. And also that will drive sales of The Last of Us Part 1, which also is a full price premium game. Uh, so yeah, basically with this, it's just Sony being able to justifiably keep this game at full RRP for longer before they have to rely on discounting to get any more juice out of it. Now, then, speaking of juice, uh, Gabe has got a lot of juice out of Half-Life. I think Half-Life's awesome. In fact, Half-Life 1 is, um, is my preferred Half-Life game. I do prefer it over uh, two. Who knows, maybe it's just because of uh, who I was when I played them. But anyway, 25 years ago, Half-Life came out. It changed PC gaming forever, and Valve are not going to be charging you 10 bucks. In fact, they instead gave the game away for free all weekend. That being said, Valve doesn't really make its money from selling video games anymore. It makes its money from earning a 20 to 30% cut, basically, of PC gaming. As it turns out, pretty dope business model. Anyway, this 25th anniversary, though, it does show reverence for the brand. It also shows that they're willing to give good stuff to the people who have supported them. So with this, you get two separate campaigns of Half-Life Uplink and Half-Life Further Data. These were both previously distributed via third-party uh, CD, so that's fairly interesting. There are four new multiplayer maps from current uh, Valve designers. Also, modern graphical options like widescreen field of view, uh, texture smoothing toggles, uh, software rendering on Linux, UI scaling and lighting fixes, new gamepad and Steam Network support, as well as it being Steam Deck verified. And also, they paid Danny O'Dwyer, that's, you know, no clip, um, they paid Danny O'Dwyer's new premium documentary production company, Secret Tape, to produce an hour-long documentary on the making of uh, Half-Life, and they put that out for free. Certainly, Danny O'Dwyer, and of course, uh, the, you know, the team of uh, craftspeople uh, behind him, uh, they put out amazing work. You should absolutely support and check out no clip. They are amazing. And uh, this documentary is absolutely fantastic. I loved it. So with this, we see the restoration of cut content, staff commentary, updates to graphics, and additional features. Yeah, quite of a funny uh, comparison. But ultimately, what it basically means here is that The Last of Us, at this point, is really the only thing that Naughty Dog makes or is interested in. They also need to train up staff and produce something from Sony in a world where their live service game has seemingly fallen to pieces. So, you know, they need that to be going on. Um, you know, they just have very different uh, incentives. But you look at Valve, and basically anything to do with Half-Life is a mere rounding error on their budget, right? Um, but what this does do is it helps further support other initiatives they're doing. As an example, this game is deck verified, and I don't know if you've checked out the skill-up video on the deck OLED, but my god, the deck OLED is actually really, really good. So it will help to push more copies off that. So basically, a definitive Half-Life 1 kind of works as a fun vanity project, you know, a big toast of their fairly amazing past that set them on a just incredible journey through gaming. And uh, yeah, 
I recommend checking it out. Sure, Valve could have charged five bucks at the time, but they didn't really need to, did they? I would also say that uh, Black Mesa is really good if you want to uh, experience Half-Life 1 in, uh, in a bit of a different way as well. Overall then, where am I left in things? Well, for me, The Last of Us Part 2, you know, I enjoyed it as uh, a game, even though it didn't really push the formula forward that much. Um, but, you know, macro narrative design to me was fairly weak. I thought it was... It, you know, I thought it was trying to be very multidimensional, but I think it was doing that in a way that was just very, very first order, very simple, right? Um, you know, it reminded me of, uh, you know, this is a horrible thing, never do it to an animal, but um, I remember, um, you know, people in the past, like if, if a dog, you know, wet itself on the floor, they, you know, put the dog's nose in its own piss, which is a really, really horrible thing to do. But I remember hearing that being a thing that back in the day people used to do. Um, of course, never do that. Terrible way to rear an animal. Awful. Big mistake. But... I felt like that is what The Last of Us Part 2 was doing in relation to cycle of violence. It was saying, look at this cycle of violence, and then it was ramming your face into it. But in a way that, to me, just felt very forced. It felt quite... I just, I just think it was quite poorly written, to be honest. And uh, it really suffered. You know, characters like Dana. I mean... Dana needed so much work. Uh, Abby could have worked out way better. Like, Abby's perfectly right to be furious at Ellie. Like, that does make sense. But uh, I just think it's a story that didn't survive its telling, frankly. And uh, yeah, it could have been a hell of a lot better. I just wish, like, you know, Dana, and I forget the other guy's name, um, person Dana left to be with Ellie. Um, but I really think that, like, there just needed to be way more of Dana to actually make those stakes work for Ellie and to actually sell just how much Ellie would be going against Dana's wishes and betraying her, uh, you know, in service of ultimately a destructive end. Um, so, yeah, you know, I thought that loads of the actual artistry and, like, the craft, the people who built that game, absolutely fantastic. Script, mid, mid, weak, uh, doesn't hold a candle on uh, on the first one, in my opinion. Anyhow, it's probably not what you came here for. My point is, uh, yeah, I did buy that game. You know, bought it for review. Um, didn't particularly have a great time with it. If, uh, you know, I wouldn't buy it for my own enjoyment, certainly, uh, after playing it. But if you're telling me, all right, there's basically a DLC for 10 bucks, okay, I'm down for that. But why, why is it not there in PS4? You know, why, why, why have they been weird about it? Obviously, they just want to sell the game at full RRP, uh, you know, more. But I suppose if you're someone who's already been invested in this story, I mean, you just got to pay normal price for this. Now, there is a hilarious workaround. I will leave you with a final tip. Uh, here we've got a, a, a place that is called CEX, and it is officially pronounced as you would imagine. You could probably go into, into there, and you could probably buy a copy of this game on disc, pre-owned, for like, uh, you know, £10. I don't know, maybe less. Uh, never mind, I speak a lie, but you can buy The Last of Us Part Two for twenty five ninety nine in Argos, and you can buy it in CEX for uh, 20 quid. I imagine over in the States, you guys can probably get similar. So, if you did want, like, the ideal jumping point, into this game that, you know, I would not recommend from a narrative perspective. Um, but what you could do is just buy a pre-owned copy. And yes, it will be annoying that you'll have to put your disc in to play the digital game, but uh, that will basically get you all the new content for vastly less than the amount of money that they're asking for. That is um, basically a way that a new entrant who maybe enjoyed part one, as I think almost anyone would, because part one's brilliant, um, and maybe they want to see where part two is going, well, that's a way you can actually get it at uh, way less than half the cost. And technically speaking, if you buy it pre-owned, Sony won't get any money, and um, well, they'll only get 10 bucks off you instead of, you know, uh, 70. So um, there's that. But do with this information what you will. Thank you for hanging out with me. Of course, I will be back here tomorrow. If you want to support the show, one of the best ways to do that is to uh, check out our sponsor and use the tracking link down below if you decide to do so, so they know that we sent you and that uh, we can pay our bills. And with that said, I'll see you tomorrow.